Here in the Astronaut Training Center, we can study the relationship between the mass of an object and its weight. We normally combine the two ideas. After all, doesn't something with more mass weigh more? Let's watch the astronaut pick up a box in Earth's gravitational field. As you can see from the graph, the amount of force applied by the astronaut to the box is higher if the box is heavier. To lift a 400 kilogram box on Earth, the astronaut needs to apply about 4,000 newtons of force. The ratio of force to mass then is 10 newtons per kilogram. We call this the strength of the gravitational field on Earth. What happens when we move to the moon? As you can see, much less force is required to lift the box on the moon. The ratio of force to mass is much lower on the moon, more like 1.6 newtons per kilogram rather than 10 newtons per kilogram. The box has the same mass, meaning the same matter content. It is just that the gravitational field of the moon is much weaker than that of the Earth. When measuring the gravitational field on a planet, you could have a set of masses just like the set owned by this astronaut. You could make a plot, as we did, of force on the vertical axis versus mass on the horizontal axis. The strength of the gravitational field, known as g, is the slope of this data graph. The units of slope are the units of rise, or newtons, over the units of run, or kilograms. This means the units of g are newtons per kilogram. When an object is simply dropped in a gravitational field, it accelerates towards the ground. The acceleration is also often described as g. It has the same value, roughly 10 on Earth and 1.6 on the Moon, but the units are meters per second squared. One way to think of this is that the acceleration is caused by the gravitational field.